Hi, we are Ranara in Britannico and we are to report the Experiment 1 which is about the preliminary test and solubility classification of organic compounds. Organic compounds is defined as compounds containing carbon atoms which are derived from living organisms like plants and animals. Synthesis and conversion reactions rely heavily on starting material. The starting material indicates the reagents to use in order to produce the desired products. In this experiment, the functional groups present are identified by using the preliminary and solubility classification tests. In this experiment, the functional groups present are identified by using these two tests. Preliminary tests often provide significant information on the characteristics of an unknown sample. Among the properties examined in a sample are its physical state, which notes whether the compound is a solid or liquid, color, odor, and its ignition properties, which will test the presence for metals. From solubility classification test, the functional group present in the compound is discovered. The schematic diagram for solubility testing is provided in the manual. The solubility class for several organic compounds are to be identified after testing their solubility properties. The meaning of each solubility class is summarized in the table that follows the diagram. This figure represents the solubility class diagram. This figure represents the solubility class table which will be the basis for the result on this experiment. Listed in this slide are the reagents used for this experiment. Listed in this slide are the apparatus used for this experiment. The classification of the samples was done by performing preliminary tests. The physical state of the compound and the changes in color and odor were observed. The flammability of the compound is tested using the ignition test. There were several factors that were considered. The flammability and nature of the flame. If the compound is solid, note whether it melts and how it melts. The odor of the vapor or gases evolves, if any and the residue left after ignition, if any. Solubility tests were done to identify the classification of the organic compounds provided. The test compounds are as follows. Preparation of the samples was done by placing 1 ml of each solvent to different microtest tubes. Using a dropper, a drop of the test compound was added to the solvent. For solids, a pinch of the sample was added. For the overview, we are to discuss the theory of solubility in terms of the following factors. The polarizability of a compound, number of carbon atoms in a compound, and the presence of branching in the structure. We are also to discuss the acid-base solubility in terms of the following factors the structural effects, electronic effects, and steric effects. And lastly, we are to describe the following compounds that are soluble in these solvents. Solubility is based on the principle that like dissolves like. Polar compounds are soluble in polar solvents, while nonpolar compounds are soluble in nonpolar solvents. Why is this so? A polar compound experiences dipole-dipole interactions with the molecule of a polar solvent, allowing the compound to dissolve in the next solvent. Similarly, a nonpolar compound experiences London dispersion forces with the molecules of a nonpolar solvent. The polarizability of a compound is the first factor in the theory of solubility. Polarizability describes the ability of an atom to distribute its electron density unevenly as a result of external influences. This means that the more electrons, the more polarizable it is. Also, the more negative the charge, the more polarizability. 
the number of carbon atoms in a compound is the second factor in theory of solubility. As the number of carbon atoms increases, the solubility in water decreases. An organic compound which is soluble in water is a typically low molecular weight polar compound of up to 5 to 6 carbon atoms or less. Carboxylic acids with an even number of carbon atoms melt at higher temperature than odd number of carbon atoms. The presence of branching in the structure is the third factor in the theory of solubility. A branch hydrocarbon generally has a smaller surface area than its corresponding straight chain isomer, and therefore, branching causes a decrease in boiling point. Branching of the carbon chain reduces the nonpolar effects and leads to increased water solubility. In organic compounds, the amount of branching will increase the solubility since more branching will reduce the size or volume of the molecule and makes it easier to solvate the molecules with solvent. Thank you for listening. My name is Nicole Dominic Aranara and the next presenter will be Gail Britannico. Solubility is the property of a solid, liquid, or gaseous chemical substance called solute to dissolve in a solid, liquid, or gaseous solvent. Polarizability is the ability to form instantaneous dipoles. It determines the dynamic, dynamical response of a bound system to external fields and provide insight into a molecule's internal structure. So molecules with a dipole moment which are the polar molecules dissolve in a polar or in polar liquids. Nonpolar molecules dissolve in polar solvents or polar molecules dissolve in nonpolar solvents have a dipole induced dipole interaction. Now, the molecules at room temperature are typically vibrating rapidly. So, as they vibrate, the electron density can change momentarily to give a temporary dipole. And this temporary dipole is stabilized when it is closer to another molecule with a, per with a permanent uh, dipole. The dipole-induced dipole interaction is very much like the dipole-dipole interaction but weaker. So when a nonpolar molecule dissolves in a nonpolar solvent, there is an induced dipole-induced dipole, induced dipole uh, interaction between temporary dipoles on solute and solvent. And these types of interaction are also called London dispersion forces. Now water has a very high dielectric constant and this allows salts to dissolve in water with dissociation. The dielectric constant tells us how well the solvent is able to separate ions. Coordination of water molecules around the anion and the cation greatly reduces the ion-ion attraction in the salt. So the number of carbon atoms, for example, in alcohol, affects its solubility in water. So as the length of the carbon chain increases, the polar OH group becomes an even smaller part of the molecule. And the molecule becomes more like a, hard, a hydrocarbon. So the solubility of the alcohol decreases correspondingly. So if the number of OH groups along the carbon chain increases, more solute water hydrogen bonding is possible and solubility generally increases. So the extent of solubility of any alcohol in water depends on capability of its molecule to form hydrogen bonds with water. So as, mole as molecular mass increases, the hydrocarbon part becomes larger which resists formation of hydrogen bonds with water molecules and hence solubility thus on decreasing. So solubility entirely depends on the alkyl group, which means larger, the larger the alkyl group, the lesser its solubility. But within isometric al isomeric I uh, alcohols, solubility increases with branching. 
This is due to the reason that as branching increases, surface area of nonpolar hydrocarbon part decreases and solubility increases. So the pH of an aqueous solution can affect the solubility of the solute. So by changing the pH of the solution, you can change the charge state of the solute. If the pH of the solution is such that a particular molecule carries no net electric charge, the solute often has minimal solubility and precipitates out of the solution. So how would you describe the compounds that are soluble in each of the following solvents? We are first given with water. So if the unknown is soluble in water, it suggests that you have at least one functional group uh, capable of hydrogen bonding with the water per four to five carbon atoms. So for example, the simple alcohols containing one to three carbons such as the methanol, ethanol, and propanol are completely soluble in water. While the butanol and pentanol containing four to five carbons carbon atoms respectively, are slightly soluble in water, while hexanol containing six carbons and other larger homologs are essentially insoluble in water. So if your unknown is soluble in water, then you can determine whether it contains an acidic or basic functional group by testing it with litmus paper. So if the red paper turns blue, when you dip it into the solution of your unknown uh, in water, then your unknown contains a basic functional group. So in simple organic compounds, this normally indicates the presence of an amine. So if the blue uh, litmus paper turns red when you dip it into the solution, then your unknown contains an acidic functional group. In simple organic compounds, this normally indicates that the presence of carboxylic acid, of course, it is impossible that your unknown has no acidic or basic functional groups, in which case you will see no change in the color of litmus paper. So if your unknown is soluble in water, then there is no reason to test the solubility in any of the other aqueous solutions, just like in our example. Since these solutions are predominantly water and consequently your unknown will dissolve in them as well. So however, if your unknown is insoluble in water, it may still dissolve in one of these aqueous solutions if it reacts to form an ionic species. So for example, in decanoic acid, it is insoluble in water, but when treated with a base such as sodium hydroxide or sodium bicarbonate, it forms a carboxylate salt, which is soluble in water. <clears throat> so if your unknown is not soluble in water, but does dissolve in 5% hydrochloric acid, then your unknown probably contains a basic functional group that is protonated by uh, the hydrochloric acid producing an ionic compound. The most, uh, common ion the most common organic uh, functional group with this property is the amine. So if your unknown is insoluble in water but does dissolve in 5% uh, sodium hydroxide solution, then your unknown probably contains an acidic a functional group that is deprotonated by sodium hydroxide producing an ionic compound. Now the two common functional groups with this property are the carboxylic acids and the phenols. Sodium bicarbonate is a weaker base than sodium hydroxide. So if your unknown does not dissolve in 5% sodium hydroxide, there is no reason to test its solubility in a solution of sodium bicarbonate. However, if your unknown does dissolve in the hydroxide solution, it is useful to test the solubility in sodium bicarbonate since 
sodium bicarbonate will deprotonate functional groups within the pKa of less than 8, but not those with pKa of greater than 8. Thus, if your unknown dissolves in the aqueous, uh, aqueous sodium uh, hydroxide, but does not dissolve in aqueous uh, sodium bicarbonate, it probably has a functional group with a pKa of between 8 to 14. That could possibly be a phenol. If, on the other hand, your unknown is soluble in the bicarbonate solution, it is likely to have an acidic group with pK of less than 8, which could be a carboxylic acid. For unknown soluble in concentrated sulfuric acid, a reaction must occur. Commonly, these unknowns are neutral oxygen-containing compounds, larger alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, esters, alkenes, and nitriles. If no reaction was secured, unknown is probably an alkene, arene, alkyl, and or aryl halides. So for the preliminary test for known samples, copper nitrate structure includes two nitrate ions on either side of the copper. The nitrate ions each have two pi, bond, pi bonded oxygen atoms attached to the nitrogen. So making it a fairly conjugated structure, which gives its bright blue coloration. It is not considered as an organic compound, ruling out the possibility of it containing any functional group. The other less characteristic confirms its uh, characteristic being an amine, carboxylic acid, nor an ester. And the ignition test indicated that it is not flammable, but it did leave a blue-green residue. The vapors emitted a mild burning odor and were white. The residue is acidic in nature, which can be attributed from the nitrate ions and turns the flame green when in contact confirms the presence of copper. So the acetic acid's odor was a sharp, sour odor or it is very pungent. This makes uh, carboxylic acid the strongest contender as its functional group. It is a clear liquid, strongly suggesting the intermolecular force holding the molecules together. So the possibility of its functional group being the carboxylic acid. And acetic acid is very flammable, flashing in less than 10 seconds after introducing it to the flame. So it did not yield any residue and was tested acidic. <clears throat> Solubility test is a very important method when determining the identity of a sample compound. This can limit the number of possibilities of its functional group as well as uh, the preceding steps used to carry out in determining the specific identity of the compound. Classifying organic uh, compounds requires first identifying its characteristics using preliminary tests and solubility tests, then sorting it to each of different classes in. This narrows down the possible, uh, the possible specific identity of the compound. One can also do a boiling point or melting point test to ensure the specificity of the result. And knowing the structure of the compound is of great help in knowing its classification, while for unknown compounds, it is best to do careful tests for, ac for accurate deductions. The test for the known compound serves as the control for determination of the unknown compound. One can compare the data gathered in the known and unknown results and should be used to assume that the compound is very likely or near the known test compound. 